sometimes because of the environment we find ourselves in, it's very difficult for us to, to share these things. Because we are all, we are all in this real moment, we're all Simamate, you know, it's all about Simamate. But deep down, there's a lot of things that are grinding us. So, I'm going to invite Jack Macheki to share a testimony with you. But at the end of it all, I want you to understand that we've come to realize that we're not here for ourselves. We're here for you. The things that you are going through now, we've been through them. Okay. Thank you, Jack.
lost and I was trying to hide a lot of pain because I was depressed. And I didn't know how to handle it. See, the thing is, the tendency with us when we're young is that we sort of try to cover up these things by making excuses for it. I'm not going to make excuses for it anymore. This was me, it was my decision. And at the same time, I lost a lot of friends. And I invited worse people into my life. I had no excuse to go down the road that I went through because my parents are Christians, they're strong Christians, my brothers, myself, but I did, I chose to go down that route to try and hide pain, rather than turning to God and leaving everything with Him. You see, when I was in my second year, and Jason can tell you, I was caught by my father for the first time, he knew what I was doing, but I was caught for the first time, and he wanted to kick me out of the house, he wanted to chase me out, but he decided to counsel me and help me. These are things that I would never wish on anybody. The pain I felt, you won't understand. And I will not wish it on anyone. You know, when I was drinking, I got sick with, with the whole drinking thing. My family still does, you know. But I got really sick. It was tearing me up from the inside. And when my father wanted to kick me out, I called my friends, I remember. And I said, guys, this is the situation. Please help me. There are only three of my friends that helped me. Miss Ishmael that you see, that's why we're really close friends. My friend Al, a lot of you rugby boys, you know him because he's close to you. And a friend of mine, Doug, they're the only ones that stood with me. Guys, I want you to know that when you're going through things, please talk to me. Talk to Mr. Molly. Talk to someone. Never let yourself go to those extremes where you are contemplating suicide, where you just want life to end because you are enough. You've had enough. Never, ever let yourself get to that stage. I know what it's like to be at the top and I know what it's like to be at the bottom. Okay? I know what it's like to try these things. If you want to try it, come and ask me. I'll tell you what it's like. Don't try it. I've, I've drank everything from the cheapest alcohol to the most expensive. Let me tell you something. The result and the effect is the same. There's no difference. There's nothing special about it. I've smoked marijuana, I've gotten high. I've seemed like I was enjoying myself. But at the end of the day, the pain is still there. We're in school together. We're surrounded by people who we think are our friends. But don't be surprised when those very same people turn their backs on you. I remember speaking to Kama once. I took him aside and I spoke to him about this very same thing. It's because I see in you guys, some, some, a lot of you guys, I see you, myself in you. When you're going through the things you're going through, I see myself in you. You know, like Mr. Mwane said, it was on his heart and he, he didn't know why he came here. The same thing with myself. I was applying for attachment jobs and no one would even look at my CV or my application. And I think it's because God wanted me to come here and not just help with coaching and computers, but to impart something in you guys. That's the reason why I'm here. Yes, I still do smoke because that's the last habit I'm trying to get rid of. I've gotten rid of the drinking and the marijuana smoking. The cigarette is the last thing that I'm trying to get rid of. I'm still somebody who's a work in progress who needs help. I'm still somebody who's striving to be successful. And trust me when I say this, when I do make it to the top in my career, you will hear about it. You will know about it and you will see this day. And this day will serve as a reminder 
that anybody can achieve what they want to achieve. I think I, I began by saying when I came here, I wasn't the first choice in anything. I was not 15B cricket, they wouldn't even look at me. When I was in primary school, the cricket coaches told my father, please take your son away from here, he's not good enough, let him find something else to do. My father went and learned the game on his own and coached me, and still coaches me to this day. The life lessons I've learned, please guys, if you need anything, if you need advice, if you need help, please come and talk to me. If you would like to speak to me after this, please do. If you would like to give your life to Christ, please come and speak to us. Because if you do that, that's the best decision you can make in your life. Because that decision influences every other decision that you make. I've heard a lot of issues about people smoking weed and drinking and all awesome. Guys, don't ruin your lives, don't ruin your chance to get a good education. Don't ruin it. Because the day you get chucked out of this school, the day you can't go to any other school, the day you can't be successful in life, the very same people you were drinking with and smoking with will not even think for a second that they should come and help you. They won't care about you. They'll simply laugh to other people or to their children one day, ah, look at that guy. That guy that's ro roaming the streets. I learned to think. Oh, that guy there, yes, we can play rugby together, and that's it. Oh, that girl there, oh yeah, you know, she used to sleep with everybody. That's it. At the end of the day, what do you have in life? Nothing. Thank you for your time.